What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I am back with a video this time once again, we're going to look at LeBron James, one of the best players of all time. And in today's video, we're going to investigate a media narrative, LeBron James makes his teammates better. This claim has been repeated by many NBA experts for the past 10 to 15 years. And in today's video, we're going to see if that's true or flat out false. Now with that being said, let's get into it. Now for this video, like I said before, we're going to look at LeBron James and he makes his teammates better. How we're going to do that, we're going to look at stats, shooting percentages, some NBA players quotes, and my own personal thoughts on LeBron James and his play style, and how it can be difficult for some players to adapt to that. And to start out, let's look at his first stint in Cleveland from 04 to 2010. During this time period, LeBron James had very little if any all-star help, and his supporting cast at best was average. Now with that being the case, everything on offense went through LeBron James. He was the best passer, the best facilitator, the best playmaker, and really their best anything on the offensive end. That's a blessing as well as a curse as you'll come to see. And looking at this graphic on your screen, here's six players who averaged 15 points or more when playing with LeBron in his first stint in Cleveland. You have Larry Hughes, Ricky Davis, Antoine Jameson, Carlos Boozer, Big Z, as well as Mo Williams. Out of those six players, only one of them had a higher scoring average with LeBron James compared to without. Now, of course, scoring isn't everything. When it comes to LeBron James and his playstyle, he needs shooters on the perimeter to knock down shots. And looking at our next graphic, you have eight Cavaliers teammates who attempted three or more threes when playing with LeBron James. On this graphic, you see their three-point shooting with LeBron James compared to without. Five out of the eight players had an improved three-point percentage when playing with LeBron James. You had Jeff McGinnis, Larry Hughes, Daniel Gibson, Delonte West, as well as Anthony Parker, all have a higher shooting percentage when playing with LeBron. And why I think that's the case is when you play LeBron James offense, you're basically a cog in his wheel. And looking at this Tyson Chandler quote, it sums it up perfectly. If you've got LeBron, you've got to make it all about LeBron. You've got to be able to coexist with that, as well as fit with that. Tyson Chandler right there pretty simply, Sums up LeBron James in his first stint in Cleveland. Did he make them better shooters? I'm pretty sure he did, getting them more open looks through his gravity. But when it comes to being better overall basketball players, I simply don't see that But looking at LeBron's first stint in Cleveland. The only player I would argue who got better was indeed Mo Williams, a one-time All-Star in 2009. That year for Cleveland, he averaged 17.8 points per game, his career high, and the Cavs had the best record in the Eastern Conference. Outside of that, look at the above average players LeBron had, he didn't make Larry Hughes better, he didn't make Antoine Jameson better, Big Z, or even Carlos Boozer. All those players who were not playing the LeBron James system got better because of that. The only players who really improved were the spot up shooters who had one simple job. Now also look at LeBron's time in Miami, his two all star teammates were Dwayne Wade as well as Chris Bosh. Without LeBron in 2010, Wade averaged 26.6 and Bosch 24.0. With LeBron, Bosch took a huge dip, and even D Wade took a marginal dip, only averaging 25.5 points per game. And the preceding years, Dwayne Wade, his role would diminish as LeBron James implemented the LeBron James system, which ran through him as well as his shooters. And speaking of those shooters, LeBron James once again had a pretty good effect on those guys. People like James Jones, Marl Chalmers, as well as Eddie House had improved shooting when playing with LeBron James when it came to three pointers. And we're looking at the Heat's big three, the one player who sacrificed big time was indeed Chris Bosch. Before LeBron, he was a superstar and arguably a top 10 player in the NBA. With LeBron, his role diminished, he wasn't nearly as good, and by the end of it, he was a spot up three point shooter. And even Bosch himself said, playing with LeBron can be extremely frustrating and hard as a third option. And even looking at someone like Mario Chalmers, he acknowledges playing with LeBron James can be difficult. Because once again, LeBron James, he demands the basketball and needs the basketball to be successful. Playing off the ball isn't something he does or is particularly good at. Now looking past Miami, let's look at his second stint in Cleveland with Kyrie Irving as well as Kevin Love. Once again, he was a big three and debatably a super team with LeBron James. Looking at Kevin Love before LeBron, he averaged 26.6 points per game, compared to with him, he only averaged 16.4. Kyrie before LeBron, averaged 20.8, he was a rookie of the year, and only 2014 All-Star Game MVP. 
with LeBron is scoring when a marginally averaging 21.7 points. You could definitely argue LeBron had a positive impact on Kyrie, but when it comes to Kevin Love, there's simply no argument to be made. As very similar to Chris Bosh, K Love on the Cavs was a three point shooter and stayed in the corners. He wasn't nearly effective, or even half the player he was playing with the Timberwolves. Once again, playing with LeBron when you're a star, you have to change your game to fit his game. And for a clear cut proof of that, I would look to LeBron James and his own words. In a tweet back in 2015, he said the following Stop trying to find a way to fit out and just fit in. Be a part of something special, just my thoughts. Later on, LeBron will clarify that tweet was directed at Kevin Love, the Cavs' third option. Once again, showing we can play with LeBron James, we have to adapt to his system and his playstyle. And per usual for LeBron on Cleveland, they had tons of shooters. And when looking at these players, LeBron once again had a pretty decent impact. As Kyrie Irving, Channing Fry, Della Madova, even Kyle Korver had improved shooting from three when playing with LeBron James. Now, looking at LeBron's time in LA, he had his fair share of help. He's had five guys average above 15 points per game. That being Anthony Davis, Brandon Ingram, Russell Westbrook, Dennis Schroeder, as well as Kyle Kuzma. And once again, only one of those players, that being Anthony Davis, had improved scoring when playing with LeBron James. And I do have to note one thing back in 2020, LeBron James was the NBA leader when it came to assists. But once again, how did that translate to his teammates as well as the shooters he played with? Looking at the players on his roster, he took above three threes, who had 13 guys during LeBron's stint with the Lakers. Only four of them have improved shooting, that being Kyle Kuzma, Anthony Davis, Avery Bradley, as well as Malik Monk. Now looking at the stat summary for LeBron in his career, he's played with 15 players paired above 15 points per game. Only three of those players had improved scoring when playing with LeBron, that being Mo Williams, Kyrie, as well as Anthony Davis. That right there is pretty clear-cut evidence. When you play with LeBron James, you sacrifice your game, your touches, as well as your overall ability playing in his offense and his system. Even looking at three-point shooters, LeBron help, there definitely are a lot of them and more than help in scoring. But once again, there's tons of players, and even more, who got worse in that aspect when playing with LeBron. Which once again begs the question, does LeBron James really make his teammates better? And for this deep question, I have a couple of thoughts. When looking at LeBron James' play, he's one of the most versatile offensive players we've ever seen. He's a Swiss Army knife and can do anything on that end. A player he reminds me of is indeed Wilt Chamberlain. Back in Wilt's day, he was a dominant force, just like LeBron, a great scorer, also like LeBron, and also a very good passer to center position. Wilt Chamberlain's pure basketball gifts are simply undeniable, and at his peak, he put up staggering stats. But when he did that, he was not winning championships. When he won championships, he took a step back and became more of a team player. Once again, for LeBron, I would argue, he's very similar to Will Chamberlain, he's very ball dominant, the teams he plays for have to adapt to him. And when LeBron's at his best, playing with Kyrie, D. Wade, even Anthony Davis, it's when those guys are doing their own thing, and LeBron James can be less ball dominant and take a step back. Larry Bird, Bill Russell, Magic, Jordan, even Kobe and Duncan, all took one step back so their team could take two steps forward. And one NBA superstar who summed this up was indeed Kevin Durant. In the following quote, he makes it pretty darn clear LeBron James has his own system and needs certain players to play with him. And one thing he does point out and highlight is that LeBron playing with young players can be very difficult. One example of that would be the 2019 Lakers who were an absolute dumpster fire. On that team, you had Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, as well as Lonzo Ball. Looking at Kyle Kuzma, he played three years with LeBron James and in total averaged 15 points per game. And his last year, only around 12. This year on the Wizards, he's much improved, averaging 16 points per game. He has 20 double doubles, a career high, and also averages career highs in rebounds, as well as assists. Looking at Brandon Ingram back in 2019, he only averaged 18 points per game. The following year, Average 23 and made his first All Star appearance. Looking at Lonzo, playing with LeBron, only averaged 10 points per game on below average two point shooting. Immediately after, he upped his scoring as well as three point shooting by nearly six percentage points. So, once again, playing with LeBron James, if you're a young player, it can be very difficult as the roles he has don't always fit the players who are up and coming and new to the NBA. 
And looking at these superstar teammates, LeBron James, you have Chris Bosh, as well as Dwayne Wade. Looking at Bosh before Miami, he averaged 24 points per game and was a double-double machine. With LeBron, only averaged 17 points per game and had changed his game completely. The same thing we said with Kevin Love, and before LeBron, he averaged 26 points per game and with him, only 17. And you could argue LeBron James completely changed K-Love's game and ruined him as an NBA basketball player. Even looking at Kyrie Irving, his best individual years have been without LeBron James playing alongside Kevin Durant. And last year, he was a 50-40-90 player, averaging nearly 26 points per game. And when really getting down to the question, if I need a simple answer, does LeBron James make his teammates better, I would lean more towards no than yes. As once again LeBron, he's an all-time great player, but in my mind, he more so carries his teammates and actually makes them better. For example of that, out of the 2018 Cavaliers, which some say is LeBron's worst supporting cast. But when you really look at it and dive deep, looking at those players, they were good and talented guys. You had Jordan Clarkson, who after LeBron averaged 17 points per game with a 6 man of the year winner. You had George Hill in Utah, only one year before LeBron, averaging 17 a game. You had Jay Crowder after LeBron, averaging 12 a game, and Rodney Hood before LeBron, averaging 17. You had some good individual players, but once again, they didn't fit LeBron James' system. It was like putting a square peg in a round hole. And to end this video, I'll quote one NBA legend, that being J.R. Smith. When talking about playing with LeBron, he makes it pretty simple. It's a gift and a curse. That pretty much sums it up as LeBron, he doesn't elevate his teammates, but he does carry them and give them more success when it comes to winning championships and making the NBA Finals. Once again, I want to state LeBron James is an all-time great player, but when really looking in depth at how he plays, looking at the stats, the shooting, I wouldn't say LeBron James makes his teammates exponentially better or has a huge impact where it's super noticeable. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.